Uh, next, we have um, uh, Nessa Childers, MEP, uh, and Nessa was asked to, uh, to just to look at uh, social justice problems and the idea of media and monopoly and where that is going. And Nessa will have some, I'm sure, pertinent and interesting views to give to us. Nessa. Good morning, everybody. Uh, last year, I hosted a national conference in Dublin on media diversity to ask the question, does media diversity matter? And I'm very pleased to be invited to speak at your conference today that expands the discussion around diversity or pluralism and asks, why is social justice not covered adequately? I've been asked to address the issue of media monopolies and social justice, and what I will do is look at the wider issues around media ownership, democracy, and impacts these have on achieving a socially just society. At my conference last year, speakers addressed the effectiveness of regulating for media diversity and looked at media ownership in Ireland. Media diversity as a condition of democracy and also examined the decline of the media moguls and the impact of voices in new media. But at its core, the conference was fundamentally about journalists and how they go about their work and about journalistic independence and how this links to democracy. But outside the core issue of journalistic independence, there are further elements that are necessary for pluralism in media. To be relevant, pluralism must not only be about the marketplace, it must involve journalistic and editorial independence and support for high quality public broadcasting services and guarantee a place for content with a cultural and economic value. Questions around community radio and TV, how the media represents women and the role of women in media and how diverse ethnic voices and experiences are represented are also critical in any debate about media pluralism. Therefore, I welcome your conference theme, which will also look at why we need to hear diverse voices and opinions in the media and why this is important for pluralism and social justice. A socially just society is one that is arranged in a way that supports engagement between people and allows people a say in how their society is governed. Social justice depends on democracy and this has to happen at every level, starting with how we design our communities. <clears throat> a socially just society also involves a rigorous examination of our institutions to ensure that they're structured so human rights are respected and that human dignity and human development is facilitated. The role of the media has an important role to play in linking people to each other and by holding a mirror up to us and showing us how we behave towards each other. As most of us receive information and ideas through the media, we cannot be lax about who is in control of telling us the news and giving us information. We cannot be lax about the source, whether it's traditional media or online. I would argue that the wealthy and those in power have always been in control of information. However, because of the globalised nature of business now, I believe people are increasingly concerned about the control of ideologies and the beliefs and worry about who is benefiting from the control. Again here, we have to link the issue of pluralism and how public policy is influenced. I believe that understanding democracy requires deep analysis in an era of global corporations, transnational corporate lobbying, corporate donations to political parties, and the dependence by the body politic on expensive marketing and sophisticated advertising campaigns to sway public opinion. When I was first elected to the European Parliament, I was really taken aback by the power and strength of the lobbying industry that would swoop into action when particular legislation was being voted in the Parliament. To analyse media pluralism, we need to analyse the links between these global corporations, the think tanks they fund, and the media who often rely on third-party research for content and news. How journalists can deal with these dedicated public affairs and communications professionals is part of the diversity equation. <clears throat> Add to this mix multinational corporations that are also media conglomerates and the line between what is news 
and what is information and what is marketing becomes more and more difficult to discern. <clears throat> In advance of my conference last year, <clears throat> in order to include the opinions of journalists, I commissioned a survey of journalists in the Republic and this question of ownership. The results were interesting. Nearly half of those surveyed believed that Ireland does not have adequate media diversity and agreed that legislation is needed to protect diversity and 42% of respondents welcomed the fact that the government is introducing legislation on media mergers. Less than a fifth of the, of the respondents believed we have adequate diversity, and 77% believe that media diversity is at risk in Ireland due to trends in media ownership. Half of them agreed that internet media is helping to protect diversity, and 61% agreed strongly that we need regulation to protect diversity in the print media. But although the journalists in the survey were concerned about diversity, in their day-to-day -day work, over a half said that owners do not directly influence their work. However, a not insignificant 20% said that they did. And the report is available on my website. Concern about media pluralism led to the European Commission setting up a high-level group in 2011 um, <clears throat> to see how the EU could enable freedom and pluralism of the media and independent media governance. Both the Commission and the Parliament believe these are key elements for enabling the exercise of freedom of expression, one of the essential foundations of the European Union, and the high-level group reported in January 2013. While the main responsibility for maintaining media freedom and pluralism lies with member states, the high-level group reported that the European Union could play a role and that it must also act when necessary to uphold the rights of freedom of movement and to protect the democratic sphere necessary for the functioning of the European Union democracy in case this might be threatened by restrictions on media freedom and pluralism in one of the member states. Uh, we have had, we had uh, quite a, a number of issues, one of, one of them being the attempts to control the media by the, the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, caused an awful lot of controversy and concern in the Parliament and in the Commission. And uh, he invited himself to the Parliament to explain uh, or try to explain his actions. But that pressure enabled him, it caused him to back off some of the things he was doing, the equivalent of which here would be interfering in the broad Broadcasting Authority of Ireland, for instance, and it was an issue of concern, as was a resolution on the Italian media and its ownership, um, which was very, very controversial in the Parliament. So, to protect pluralism, the report advised that the EU should support a number of strategies, including that media literacy should be taught in schools, and the role media plays in a functioning democracy should be critically assessed as part of national curricula and integrated either with civics or social studies. There should be cross-border harmonisation of libel laws and data protection. The EU should play a role in the protection of diverse access to online information. And a free and pluralist media should be a precondition for EU membership. That there is a growing need to provide more and better focused support for the creation of content rather than just its distribution and high quality journalism and the report suggests a number of measures to support this. It also addressed journalistic standing in online media and said there was a need for greater awareness of the use of tracking algorithms and the public should be allowed to choose to turn off personalised news feeds. So to conclude, if we want to encourage social justice media, we also have to look at legislation to protect freedom of expression, enable quality journalism, educate everyone about the media and make media literacy part of the curriculum and support an EU-wide role in these ideas, supporting these ideas. But essentially, we have to enable the interaction and engagement by people to break down barriers and to support their full involvement in shaping society. And I see community TV and radio as playing a vital role in this regard. And just to say something that's off script, but in relation to something that Minister Rabbit said that made me think about social justice and media, he said that the, that 
there, that you came out the right side of the crisis. I think this made me wonder about, about the crisis. Are, is there a right side of it? Are we coming out of it? All those things are arguable, but one of the things that is very important for people to realise about the way the media report on the crisis, we can't see anything now except through the filter of before and after the crisis. However, we will recover. The kind of recovery it will be can be seen from history. The recovery will at first benefit only certain groups, but there will be people left behind. And what I would like to challenge every member of the media in here is the following. Will you report on those that have been left behind, about the debris that will be left on the shore and not taken care of? Or will you be taken up with, if you like, the euphoria of a recovering economy, which, which will possibly benefit you know, only certain people and others will be left behind? And I think, there, there, I think it will be very interesting to observe how that kind of social justice is reported by the media, you know, and whether those who have been left behind will be cared about um, by anybody. So thank you very much for listening.